Welcome to our lecture examples on IFRS 2. Before you start with your examples, please ensure that you have your revision pages or your notes of IFRS 2 with you, as well as your standard. Now, what is extremely important is that when you do an example, I want you to spend a few seconds and view your revision page or your notes to be able to identify the principle. Why do I want you to do this? I want you to be able to see how important this is that you need to study your principles and your theory and then you will identify I am not going to work through all of the examples with you this is a list of the examples that I will work with you and you need to ensure that you work through the rest of them on your own time you will identify that I did include sufficient notes and comments and you are more than welcome to send me an email if you have any questions In this example, we will look at repricing during vesting period. Now you will identify on the right side of your screen that I have included our solution as well as our modification theory at the bottom in our pink block. At the beginning of year one, an entity grants 100 share options to each of its 500 employees. Immediately, when you identify share options, you need to know that this will be equity settled and your journal entry will be to debit your employee cost in your profit and loss and to credit your share-based payment reserve in your statement of changes in equity. Each grant is conditional upon the employee remaining in service over the next three years. We now know that this is a vesting condition and the vesting period is three years. Now, what does this mean, guys? When you calculate your share-based payment reserve, you will remember that you need to recognize only the portion for that relevant year. The entity estimates the fair value of each option is 15 Rand at this date. Now, at this date will be our grant date. Now you will remember, when we look at our measurement date, your measurement date, you need to identify if this will be a transaction with employees or with other parties. Now let me write down guys, measurement date. If this is a transaction with your employees, you need to know measurement date and grant date will be the same date and this will be the date when they enter into the agreement. On the basis of a weighted average probability, the entity estimates that 100 employees will leave during the three-year period and therefore forfeit their rights to the share options. Guys, they indicate to us that they estimate 100 from the 500 will leave during the three-year period. Suppose that 40 employees leave during year one. Also suppose that by the end of year one, the entity's share price has dropped and the entity reprices its share options, but that the repriced share options will vest at the end of year three. Now, when you identify that they indicate to you that they reprice the share options, immediately you need to identify that this will be a modification and we need to identify first if this is beneficial to the employees and if not beneficial to the employees you will ignore the modification in the next paragraph the entity estimates a further 70 employees will leave during year two and three Therefore, the total number of expected employee departures over the three-year vesting period will be 110. During year two, a further 35 employees leave and the entity estimates that a further 30 employees will leave during year three. To bring the total number of expected employee departures over the three-year period to 105. During year three, a total of 28 employees leave. Therefore, a total of 103 employees ceased employment during the vesting period. For the remaining 397 employees, the share options vested at the end of year three. Entity estimates that at the 
date of repricing. The fair value of each of the original share options granted is 5 Rand and the fair value of each repriced share option is 8 Rand. Now guys, when you look at this, 5 Rand versus 8 Rand on repricing date. Therefore, this will be beneficial to the employees. If this is beneficial to the employees, we need to calculate our incremental amount. Now, what is your first step? You need to include your table. You need to include your number of employees, number of options, vesting period, the price or fair value, share-based payment reserve, which will be the total, and then your movement to your profit and loss. Then you will remember that we have indicated during our lecture that you need to still include your original calculation with your original 100 share options at 15 Rand. Therefore, for year one, they've indicated to us that a total expected departures of employees will be an amount of 110. The 40 plus 70 Therefore, our total number of employees at the end of year one will be 390. Then at the end of year two, they've indicated to us that the total expected departures is 105. This will be the 40 plus 35 plus 30. And therefore, our total number of employees will be 395. Then year 3, the remaining number is 397. I will now first look at my original agreement. For year 1, we have the 390 employees times 100 options times 1 over 3 vesting period 3 years and extremely important times 50. 15 rand guys you will identify for each year 15 rand why this is equity settled therefore we will use our fair value at grant date and then for year one we need to recognize a total amount of 195000 in our share based payment reserve and we will debit employee costs and we will credit share-based payment reserves. For year two, exactly the same except for our vesting period, which will now be times two over three. And our total share-based payment reserve should now be 394. But it is important that you identify this is before our modification. We now need to include our modification. We still have 395 employees. We still have our 100 options. And now, important to identify, guys, there will be two years remaining. Two years remaining from date of modification. Therefore, we need to calculate our share-based payment reserve based on the remaining period and because this is beneficial to our employees we had to determine the incremental value to be three rand we will have to recognize an additional amount due to the modification to our share based payment reserve of five nine two five zero and our total share based payment reserve now guys, I'm just going to take out this blue highlight. Our total share-based payment reserve at the end of year two should be 454250. And this will result in a movement to be recognized in our journal of 259250. Now year three, we need to include our modification we still have the 397 employees. We have our 100 options and we need to include for our vesting period two years. Our incremental value guys, the 3 rand additional section and our total share-based payment reserve at the end of our three years 
will be 714600 and we may now recognize our final movement of 260,350 in our journal.